10 5 so i will start uh, today's session uh, so welcome everyone to the morning session of the day three of ocean conference uh, in our discourse of open science uh, we have tried to explore various dimensions starting from the most talked about issue open access or challenging ones such as open research data or inclusions of various knowledge systems into the mainstream science. Today, we wanted to explore the issues of how conversation, discussion, and collaboration in science can help, because this is another discussion or, which is promoted by UNESCO, or open science recommendation that science now should be more collaborative. If we have to solve the global challenges through STI, then we need dialogues, not just among the scientists, but with society as large. So in next two hours, we will try to understand what role electronic thesis and dissertation can play, because we know a lot of knowledge comes through the PhD thesis or master's thesis. Some of them get published, but a not, lot of knowledge just traditionally been enclosed into those spaces. So first of all, getting access to those knowledge, how will it help the open science? And then another question, very basic one from a student's perspective, let's say, will this help them in collaborative writing if they use uh, electronic thesis and dissertation? Are there possibilities of improving the writing habits? Okay, let's invite Mr. Nilanjan Sinha. You will Take us through the digital workflow initiative from Author Cafe. Nilanjan is a product head at Author Cafe, a digital platform focused on research writing, management, and dissemination. Uh, he has 14 plus years of experience with various roles in the technology industry. For the last five years, he has been focused on solving problems related to scholarly communication and academic research. He has built XBio, a revolutionary biology learning platform, and Review Central, one of its kind submission and peer review platform. In the past, he currently at Author Cafe focused on helping researchers and institutions enhance the experience of doing, supervising, and managing a PhD program. Thank you. Over to you, Nilanjan. Uh, thank you, thank you, Momita, for the kind introduction, setting the context, and also giving us this opportunity. Good morning, all of the participants. Uh, in today's context of this OSAN conference, where we are talking about uh, open science, we are talking about the different facets, different dimensions, the challenges and opportunities of it. Uh, like Momita said, we are going to take a look at it from a slightly different dimension, something which we have not uh, heard much about, which is the area of PhD thesis or the electronic form of it as Pomita described ETD, electronic thesis and dissertation. And I'm going to talk about what we have at Author Cafe, we have been doing about it. Right? Uh, if, and I'm going to run you through our presentation, we will, walk you through what we have done, what we have learned through this journey. We would also seek your opinion. And we would also try to give you a demo or a glimpse of what we have built, how possibly it could help. Seek your feedback there. And towards the end, we would also like to invite some of the volunteers to actually uh, test the platform or experience the platform by yourself. And again, give us any feedback. What do you think we can do better? Uh, that said, I will get started. If someone can just confirm if my slide is presentation is visible. Yes, yes, it's visible. Okay. All right. Uh, as this slide suggests, so at Author Cafe and in today's context, we are going to talk about the workflow. It's a technology-led initiative uh, towards mission of open science, towards making science more open, more collaborative, initiating more discussions and conversation and few other best practices of it. And there, right from the knowledge creation, which is almost the first step to the final dissemination. So all of these steps, how we can uh, enable that through technology using Author Cafe is what we are going to see and talk about. Before we go further, it would help to understand 
all of you much better. Uh, what is your background, where you come from? So I would request uh, Shivan and Mometa to run that poll first. Uh, Neil, can I request you if I can share my screen? Yes, please. Participants, we would like to know you better. Uh, so this is the poll. Uh, and Momita, can you please help to paste it? Yeah, on? I have pasted it. I don't know if uh, okay. I have sent it, but uh, can and is everyone can see the poll? Yes, Momita, we can. Yeah, we are getting the response. Yeah, thank you. So we can uh, so the pan uh, so the attendees can check in the chat box and Okay, uh, I see there's a very interesting mix of uh, audience here. We have we have folks from Bangalore, we have folks from uh, academic institutions and funding agency. We also have someone from outside India, from Paris, from CSIR lab. So a very interesting mix. So thanks for thanks for responding uh, to this poll. It gives us a good understanding of uh, who we are talking to. And uh, just to know the better uh, audience. Uh, we have another uh, poll just to understand from where you are coming from. This is another poll if you can just answer. You can use the same link. It has, uh, it has the same link. It's good to see bars of every color. Let's give it another 30 seconds to see how it grows further. We have 22 attendees so far. And this number does not add up to that. Can we have more responses, please? So when it's the same link which they can use to respond, right? Yes, it's the same link. We just have to continue. Okay, so Prakya says new attendees cannot see it. So I will just paste the link once more, I guess. All right. All right. Uh, so here I have pasted the link for the poll again. So maybe uh, they can go to the second poll. Uh, in that link.
we have now 16 responses. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, it's following the trend. We have uh, a fair share of PhD scholars, but we also have a representation of uh, PI supervisors and postdoctoral fellows. Uh, so I hope all of you would find this session relevant, and I will try to st <coughs> uh, structure the discussion accordingly. That all of you have something, some uh, some meaningful takeaway from it, and uh, and let's let's get started with that. Kiran, can I? share my screen back again yes, yes. <coughs> okay talking of open science uh, i think this slide is self-explanatory on the need of science or uh, the challenges why we are all talking about open science right if last slide was not enough i think uh, this i this is very ironical, but this is the reality, and uh, this is the rest of it, right? Uh, <clears throat> where it indicates that there's an article on inaccessibility of science, but even that's behind a paywall, right? Uh, so with that context, let's deep dive a little more into why open science, and here we would share our perspective, what, what we have learned by talking to academic institutions, individual researchers, like PhD scholars or postdocs or PIs or supervisors, all of the uh, kind of uh, people whom we have here and even beyond. And fundamentally, there are four things which we have learned. The first one being that uh, uh, we also saw that there's someone from funding agency. So we know that funding agency is funded Sometimes it's privately funded, many a times it's publicly funded as well from taxpayers' money. So there has to be a democratic access to people who have funded it, which at most of the times it's public because it goes public money goes behind. And that's not just true for India, it's largely true globally. So and, and that access has got its merits of its own because it increases awareness, it, it makes people more sensitive about it. It also gives them the kind of acknowledgement of uh, how their fund is being utilized. And then, of course, it has got its benefit to the academic community. For example, it in scholarly communication, reproducibility or lack of reproducibility is one big problem. By making science open, by making the research open, it helps others build on top of it. It helps others draw parallels to it. It also acts as a deterrent to plagiarism. And it also acts the, uh, the mistake of duplication, even if, it, if it's not an intended act, even unintentionally, if the, if the information is out in the open, then people would not reinvent the wheel. And that would save enough time and resources for everyone. Yeah. And then these are some of the challenges which we all know are very, very relevant for all of us. We all struggle with it in some shapes and form. Making science open, uh, like Momita was also uh, highlighting it uh, in her opening remark that uh, open science is about open dialogues and conversations and collaboration. So if science is open, if it's accessible to everyone, it invokes good conversations, criticisms, collaborations, and opens up new opportunities. It also helps individual to refine their work a lot more. It also helps others who come across that report or that science uh, content so that they can build upon it, they can critique it, they can collaborate. So it opens up whole new, uh, uh, whole new world of opportunities, which otherwise becomes very, very difficult or happens only in certain, uh, in certain forums, for example, conferences, or only when someone goes through uh, a, a report or a paper, which is behind a paywall. And all of these three things eventually help science. It helps us accelerate discovery, which again, the benefit of that is not limited to one person or one institution or a group of people. The benefit is global. It, it benefits the whole humanity. Right? And that is why we are talking of open science in this theme and even today. With that said, 
again, uh, we would like to know your opinion. What do you think about open science? How do you see open science? What are the apprehensions do you have with open science? I think this poll might help us understand whether there are things which you think is a myth or they are a fact. Uh, can I, Shivin, uh, I'll stop sharing and if you could present your screen and share the link, please. I have shared the link. So to all the attendees, so they can Thank go you. ahead and share my screen. Yeah. Thank you. interesting to see both the responses. There is another question in continuation to this. The audience can answer that also. Using the same link, you can answer this question. Uh, Amita, can you please share the uh, third uh, poll question also? Yeah, sure. I will do that. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, I have posted the third poll uh, link, the new one. Everyone can start. Yes, and just share this.
Okay. And there is another question We're using the same link. Your audience can answer this. Can we have some more responses, please? Okay, thank you. Stop sharing my screen. Neil, I'll hand it over to you. Sure. Thanks, Shivan. Thanks, Mahika. Okay, uh, as we saw through your responses, most of you, or many, many of you said that uh, some of those questions, you stated that most of those pointers were a myth, but also there were significant amount of people who said that uh, it's a fact, right? Um, and we understand why you might be saying so, uh, those concerns, and, and we, we are going to look at those things in a little bit of a detail. And this is what we think about those. That open sense, uh, or open science, you said, some of you said it's a myth, some of you also said it's a fact. But is it the end of the privacy, or does that increase the reach of our work and uh, helps us collaborate with others better. It increases visibility. It helps them benefit from it, right? Uh, but we also realize why you may feel that it's end of privacy because your work might be sensitive, I think, which was the second point that it enables others to steal your work. But uh, if done properly using proper uh, best practices and frameworks, then you can still claim your right to it, but by making it open, you enable others to cite it, the build upon your work and even collaborate with you, right? Uh, so yes, if we look at it in isolation, it may feel like that open science ends privacy. It enables others to take our work and take credit for it, which would not be in our favor. But if we look at it holistically and uh, with the frameworks and practices we have in place, then we can actually make the most of it, right? Is it about pointing fingers? Maybe, maybe not, but uh, uh, we actually look at it that it's more about collaborating. Uh, it's less about pointing fingers. It's because in science, we are trying to discover the absolute truth. So more, more the merrier, the more inputs which we get from others, the more criticism we get, it only makes our work much better. Uh, so eventually it ends up benefiting us. Does that mean that everyone will see our mistakes? Maybe if there are some gaps or flaws, not necessarily mistakes, uh, nothing is perfect, but it definitely helps us understand things which we may not have thought about, uncover our blind spots, right? And uh, it enables open feedbacks. And again, going back to enable open discussion, conversations, collaboration, it all boils down to that. And that is how we see open science, right? Yeah, but it was very interesting to see responses on the both sides. And uh, maybe in the Q&A, as we go along this conversation, uh, we would uh, love to hear more of your thoughts. And if you had any follow-up questions or that, or any, any thoughts on this. Yeah? Uh, and, and the reason why we 
did this poll and we have this slide is because we wanted to understand your thought process because these are some of the things which we encounter as well when we talk to more of researchers and academic institutions like you. And these are some of the usual apprehensions or counter arguments we have heard against open science. So we wanted to share our perspective and also understand your thought process. Okay, now we have spoken about open science uh, enough and now let's uh, uh, change gears a little bit and now talk specifically about the, in context of the PhD research output or primary PhD research output, which is a thesis or a dissertation. But why do we have electronic added to that, right? And the name as it's self-explanatory, it's the digital form of it, right? So traditionally, uh, PhD research output has been in a hard copy format. There have been some initiatives in India and globally in last 10, 15 years, or a little more than that, where there has been a digital format of that as well in form of a repository uh, within an institution or at a national level in, in some countries. So there have been some initiatives and the digital form of a thesis or dissertation as the past has proven, it has got its own benefits. And that, that is what electronic thesis and dissertation is about. But in today's conversation, we are going to take a step further and we are going to talk about how we can make electronic thesis and dissertation far more valuable for everyone in the community, right? And also how we can help, how Author Cafe is helping already some of the things which we are doing and even as we are on this journey, how we can even keep helping uh, or enhance the benefits of a thesis or a PhD research output aligning with open science by helping them right from the knowledge creation to the point of knowledge dissemination. So that is what we are going to talk about. So why ETD? Uh, now open science benefits are obvious and we spoke about them, but why thesis and specific when publications are already there, we are talking about research publications being open access and there are enough mechanisms already in place and there's enough discussion which already happens for that. So why do we talk about ETD in context of open science? So this is a quote which we have picked up from, uh, uh, from an agency called Shodganga with whom we work, uh, we have been working and discussing with, right? And uh, we keep getting inspired from them as well. We keep seeking guidance as well. and. This is one quote which I think very well summarizes why PhD research output, which is thesis, uh, needs its place. Okay, uh, as you can see, they have very well highlighted it's not as uh, utilized as it should be, but it's still it's a rich asset. And what problems does it lead to? Some of the things which we spoke earlier that leads to unnecessary duplication and repetition, right? Which is against the fundamental law of the research and which leads to the wastage of all of these sort. Uh, quote from them again, this is their vision and this is, this is how they see thesis to be evolving and this is why they feel that ETD is very, very important and we can't agree more. We also very strongly believe that as days pass by and as more and more institutions and individuals realize and benefit from ETD, uh, the whole ecosystem will start realizing its value much more, okay? Uh, and this is in context of India, but I think this is relevant globally. Uh, just for everyone's benefit, if people are not from India, AICT, UGC, MHRD, and NAC, these are four agencies in India, regulatory body, educational bodies, government bodies, and IR is institutional repository. So here, Shodganga is saying that in days to come, the thesis repository would become a common place and it would become uh, it would become a place or become a parameter how a university would be judged as being innovative or not because that would showcase how much they are embracing technology, how much they are aligned with open science and it will also give a, a peek into what kind of research are they doing. Of course, publications are there but they have their own uh, space. Thesis also gives uh, allows an institution to showcase a large part of the research which does not find its way into the mainstream. Right? And this is 
Shodganga. And Shodganga is a Indian government national policy initiative, right? Where from all over India, all of the PhD scholars, once they, when they, once they earn their PhD, uh, the institutions are advised to put up all of those theses into that single repository, right? Uh, so it's it's a national level repository, a very rich repository. And uh, in the last 10, 12 years, they have been actively working with Indian institutions. And by now they have uh, close to four lakh pieces. And these numbers are increasing rapidly. Although when we had a discussion with uh, them, and uh, even when we have spoken to some of the academic institutions or scholars or researchers, uh, people who needed to access or wanted to access Shodh Ganga uh, for its obvious benefits. There's one challenge which we learned from all of these stakeholders that, that it definitely is a one step in that direction. That thesis, which was not available, is now available for them to access, but it is in PDF format. And PDF format has traditionally been a print oriented format. So it works beautifully when you have to take a physical print of something and read it. But when you want to read it on web or when you want to search something on web, it's not the most optimally designed format. It's not a, a web friendly format. There are formats which are far more friendly for the, uh, for the web platform, right? And that is one challenge which we have seen is what we are going to talk about, right? But definitely Shodganga is a great step in that direction. And they have uh, been a pioneers in making ETD more and more popular and more and more useful for everyone in the community. The second challenge which Shodganga has been having is at a scale of this country with uh, institutions of different kinds, public, private, semi-private, uh, research-oriented, academic-oriented, a high a mix of both uh, of different streams from different kind of cities, uh, cities with different kind of access to digital infrastructure or access to technology. With all of that heterogeneity, Shodh Ganga has been struggling in getting the thesis from all of the institutions at the right time and in the right structure. This there's a humongous amount of heterogeneity which is there, and that adds to the complexity, and that has been one struggle. So however much we would have wanted or they have been trying to, but 3.8 lakh thesis uh, for considering scale of India still is a very, very small part of the research output which is being generated, right? But like I said, that still it's a great step in that direction, and that's also evolving. and. We at Author Cafe are trying to play a very small role in supplementing uh, this initiative or uh, playing a very small role in overcoming some of or addressing some of these challenges in this context. So now in this journey, when we have been working with, uh, when we have been discussing with Shodhanga, we've been working with them, we have been working with Indian academic institutions, the individual researchers as well, there are some specific benefits of ATDs, which we have seen, and that is very much in line with what we saw Shodh Ganga talking about. First is uh, the journal publications. They are mainstream. They are available mainstream for everyone to access, but someone's four years, five years worth of work of PhD, uh, which goes out primarily in their thesis or dissertation, does not find its way into mainstream media. And that's why its reach is very, very limited, right? Uh, plus the amount of details what one puts in thesis as opposed to a research paper, which is a 20, uh, could be a 20, 25 page, uh, long page uh, paper, right? Uh, and if you compare that with 300 page thesis or 200 page thesis, it's natural that the amount of details would be far more. So it acts, it could act as a very good supplement and it does act as a very good supplement in the places where it has been implemented well, because it contains all of the details and not just your positive result, but negative results as well, which are also very, very important. And we were talking of reproducibility. So this is one huge benefit when, it, uh, when we talk about reproducibility or lack of it. Second point just expands on that, where 
the there's a full disclosure of research what worked for us what did not work for us because a success comes after multiple failures and uh, in a research paper often there's a limitation of talking only about the things which worked and very little space and scope for things which did not work or the whole journey all of the granular granular details of that journey which might be very very helpful for others and uh, just imagine that when I'm doing my PhD and on day one, if I know that all what I'm going to write in my thesis is going to be publicly available for everyone to see. That thought process itself invokes the culture of transparency. It makes me far more accountable and it, uh, it invokes all of the good practices naturally of research ethics, right? Because I know uh, I would be far more conscious. I would be far more responsible uh, and naturally be more accountable in the quality of work which I do, in the kind of details which I share in my thesis, in the kind of uh, kind of information I may attach along with that. So all of that aligns with the good practices of research as well as open science, right? Uh, which also prepares them to be a very good researcher or a researcher with all of these best practices which they might have practiced all through these all through their phd journey which is one serious step towards one's research career uh, this point we have already spoken enough but uh, if you look at it from institution perspective if we make thesis publicly available uh, it and we have seen that in the past i'll talk about uh, one or two such examples that just by making the research output in detail available on the web for the world to see triggers a lot of conversations and that in turn may trigger into collaborations as well. Uh, best of it, there's no additional cost. Unlike general publications where you may have to pay certain fees. Right? Uh, if you have written your thesis already that you have to do anyway as part of your institutional uh, requirement uh, for your PhD degree, you do not have to spend any additional amount uh, for it to be put up on web. Of course, there has to be a basic digital infrastructure, uh, which an institution might put, but for an individual, there's absolutely no additional cost. Plus, uh, because ETDs are predominantly digital and uh, institutions have great control on it, they can enable them to provide all of these details, for example, codes or programs or supplementary files, everything as links, which can be accessed very well, which is a little, difficult uh, uh, in the other mediums, especially the print media, right? So there it becomes a bit of a deterrent. And this again makes the reproducibility, uh, it enables reproducibility. This also again acts as a deterrent to plagiarism and all of those things which we uh, spoke about or generally we talk about uh, as an enabler or as a benefit of open science. So these are some of the primary benefits which we have seen and we have seen institutions realizing by adopting ETD in true spirit of principle. Plus, uh, in that poll when we did about open science, some of you were saying that open science uh, is an end of privacy. It's a fact. Open science is about stealing my work. It's a fact, right? Uh, and like I said, we realize why you say so. It's a genuine concern. So ETD also takes care of that. There are mechanisms for that. For example, if I am a PhD scholar and I've done, uh, I'm doing my, I've just finished my PhD and I might be filing for a patent. I might be writing a paper based on my thesis. I might not be very comfortable in making it uh, public or making it out in the open. So that is completely okay. Until the time I file that patent or until the time my paper is out maybe for next one or two years, you can place an embargo, which means that, that th your thesis cannot be accessed until a, that particular event or a particular defined time period, right? Uh, or even there you can define, you have that control that which part of the content you would want the world to see, which you are okay to share. And you think that that would help you get more credibility, that would help others know about your work and maybe seek out uh, uh, reach out to you for conversations and collaboration, but there might be a large part of work in your thesis, which you might want to still keep protected or very, very private. You can do that as well. Because it's your own work, you have complete control on that. OK. 
there. So that's another benefit where you will have absolute control on what part of content you want to show and when and to who all. Okay. Uh, and this is again something which we will show in the demo, which we are going to get into shortly. How this, uh, how Author Cafe enables uh, much of these pointers which we spoke about. Uh, talking of <laughs> when we are thinking of uh, what are the benefits of thesis and to put it together for all of you, we we recall this incidents and some of you may know this when this happened. I think some five years back. Although this is extremely special, it's extremely exceptional. Not everyone is Stephen Hawking, but this gives us a sense of the benefit of putting out a work in open, someone's research work in open and how others can benefit from it, right? And uh, the fans, as we know that they had crashed the website then because there were so many people who had flocked to it. But even if you look at it more realistically, right? Even if the website does not crash, but you can imagine the kind of views it can get, the kind of uh, exposure your work can get. And that is what we are trying to say for this, right? Okay, uh, now let me get into the demo, all what we have been talking, uh, the proof lies in the pudding. So let me show how the Author Cafe platform works. And uh, if you have any question, you can keep putting it in the chat window. And after the demo, we will, uh, we will address all of those questions. And even if you have a question, then and there we can address those too. Just allow me a moment to pull up the platform. Okay, I hope my screen is visible now. Uh, yes, yes, it's visible. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so this is Author Cafe's dashboard. Uh, so I'm going to skip some of the steps and I will show you the key parts of Author Cafe platform. Like Mamita had described, Author Cafe is a research writing platform. It's a research management platform and it's and it also helps institutions or individuals to disseminate their work. So right from knowledge creation to finally disseminating it, all of it can be done through Author Cafe and how is what we are going to see. So this is the dashboard of Author Cafe. This is my dashboard here. Uh, I already have a report. So first I'm going to show you the knowledge creation part, how knowledge can be created, which basically means how a research report can be written. It could be a thesis, it could be a grant proposal, it could also be a, uh, it could also be a manuscript uh, uh, draft, right? It could be any of those research report or different kind of outputs. So I already have a report here pre-populated in the interest of time. I had populated it here, but I'm going to walk you through some of the key steps or key features of it, how it can help as an individual and also the institution, okay? And all of that in context of open science. Okay. So <clears throat> I'll just quickly scroll through to give you a view of the report, which is here. As you can notice that this is a video which has been put up here and I'm going to show you all of that. So it has got text, it has got some images, few videos, uh, some of the sections which uh, you might already be familiar with. You'll also notice that there is a simulation and then at the bottom you have a section called source. Now let's go to the top. So uh, in this research writing platform, there are <clears throat> two major sections, even before you start writing research, there's something called as asset manager, 
which is your private space or your private repository. It's your personal space where you can store all of your files. So here I have already brought in a Word file here. So in Author Cafe, I can do writing here. I can write here just the way you do it in MS Word or Google Docs. So there's nothing new here. But besides that, this is a place where you can bring all your files, right? It could be a Word file, it could be a data file, it could be an image and so on and so forth. And you can also invite, if you want to do a collaboration here, you can invite your collaborators and they can also upload some of the files here. I'll request my colleague Shivain to upload a file here so that all of you can see. But uh, as you can notice, this shows this shows my name here, uh, which indicates that this particular file was uploaded by me, okay? And while I am writing, whatever I had in this Word document outside, so here in this case, I had references, I will be able to bring that up. On click of a button, I can bring the whole content here. And all of this comes and sits here, right? So imagine that if there are two or three or four collaborators, or maybe in case of thesis, it's just the scholar and their supervisor. So they can bring all of their files here and they can use or reuse it the way they want. Not just that, uh, we all work through multiple versions of a manuscript or a thesis document, right? So you may create so this project is basically one report or one document which you have. You may have multiple versions of it or you may have a different uh, report which you may have written. You can go back to that and you can pick up a file from that particular, let's say this was one such report which I had written in the past and these were the files which I had brought into my personal workspace. And if I want to use this in my current report, I can do that as well. And I'll just run click off a button. I'm able to bring that file here, right? And now this gets added to my current project, this file. So this is how it helps me collaborate with others around the files. And it helps collaborate very, very effectively uh, with regards to the data sharing and its use and reuse. That's one part. The second part is references. And when we talk about research writing, references, of course, are a very, very important uh, integral part of that. So there are, so Author Cafe helps you manage all of your references for which you might be using Zotero, Mendeley, EndNote kind of platforms. It helps you bring your references. It helps you manage them. It helps you cite them. And it also helps you style them which means anything and everything which you do generally with the references, Author Cafe helps you do that. And it also helps you <clears throat> leverage if you, let's say if you are already a user of a Mendeley or Zotero. So you can bring all of your references from your Mendeley library, but for a particular report, you just have to sign in and then you can fetch uh, your BibTech file from there, which Mendeley provides. And then let's say if you have 400, references in your Mendeley library or Zotero library. You need not bring everything here for this particular report. You can pick and choose. Let me show that to you. Uh, so I have this BibTech file, which I had used in another project. And this is trying to fetch the references I had in that. So while this pulls it up, uh, I will show you other methods how you can bring references. One was I could bring it from my Mendeley or Zotero library. Plus I can also bring in from Crossref. Let's say if I'm writing and I realize, hey, I don't have a particular reference. So by being in the same platform, I can search for it and it will again go and fetch the result from these databases. It will show me here, for example, <clears throat> this particular reference showed up. I can look it up and if I'm happy, this is the reference I wanted. Then being in the same place, 
I can add it to my reference manager. Like we had asset manager, which is nothing but my private workspace of storing all my files and collaborating. Same way we have reference manager where you can bring all your, of your references, your collaborators can bring references, and then you can prepare that list. And while you are writing, you can keep citing them and styling them. But first, let me bring in a few more references. So I showed you that how we could bring it from Crossref. Likewise, we can bring it from PubMed, or these are two other methods. There's one more method. You may already have a reference here in your writing. You might already have brought it in form of a document. So in that case, I will let Authentify know that these are the references I have in my list. And what it will do is, it will remove it from uh, my report, but it will push it out into the reference manager. It will add it there and all of these 22 references get added here. And I had one reference in the, uh, which I added through Crossref. Now I have 23 references here. So I have all of the references which I needed. I have brought it from multiple sources. And now while I'm writing, I can just take a look at the reference and I can just keep citing them, right? So while I'm writing, I can keep making those citations. I'll randomly make some citations here. Now, while I'm making those citations, automatically it will build a bibliography for you, like all of the references which I have cited here. I cited, I think, a couple of references. Let me cite a few more. And as I keep doing it, this list keeps on getting built automatically. So this saves a lot of your time. It also prevents human error. Now, you may have a question that uh, for my journal or for my institution, I need a particular reference style. So I'm using, I'm showing you a test setup. We have more than 20 references, but here, uh, this I think should give you an idea of how this works. So once you have done the citation, based on the style which you need, you can select that and automatically it will change, not just your in-text citation, but also this reference list here, your bibliography. Again, if I change it to a different reference style, this gets updated accordingly. And also your citation gets up updated accordingly, right? So this takes this is how it takes care of your complete reference management or reference handling, which you don't have to worry about. And uh, these are some of the parts with which we have heard time and again, people say that they really struggle even though they use plugin of Mendeley or Zotero with Word, but it is not very seamless. And we have seen, uh, especially with early career researchers, them struggling and we have seen them using this and finding a great value in it, okay? Uh, so this is how it helps you manage all of your references and cite them. Let's say I have brought in all of my files here. I have brought in my references here and I have all of those necessary ingredients in place and now I'm uh, doing my writing. So, and if I want to invite a collaborator for that, so you can see that I already have a collaborator here. I've invited my colleague Shivain because I it was my report. I could control uh, what permission he will have. So I have given him read and write permission, but there's also chat, which we will show you how it helps with effective collaboration. If I want to invite more people, I can, I only, they don't need to have access to Arthur Cafe necessarily. I just need to give their email ID and define the permission and also send them a message, which goes out as an email. And once they, and here you'll see that this says a spending. Once they accept my invite, I would be notified about it. But now let's see what Shivain is doing here. You can see that there is an initial SH, which is Shiv Shivendra's credentials and this tells me that he's online here and he is doing something and while we can collaborate on this report I can't do anything on this paragraph because he is writing that bit so that I don't mess up with it I think he moved somewhere else and now I can make edits and I see this text in blue color this tells me that he had inserted this content right 
Uh, Shivin, can you just delete something? And while you delete in the same paragraph of introduction, I will. Uh, Shivin, can you go to introduction paragraph, please? Uh, Shivin. I'm not sure where cursor is right now, but that's okay. Uh, so while he is collaborating, I think he moved out of this report for some reason. I don't see him around, but multiple people can collaborate. There is no limitation. They can write at the same time. The only limitation is that one particular paragraph or one particular let's say if it's an image that cannot be worked on by two people at the same time so that they don't uh, interfere with each other's work but there could be n number of collaborators and they can do the editing and they can keep writing they can make changes to what i have written so here he has added shivendra has added something he can also add something here and meanwhile i'll also invite another colleague shivin are you there Shivan, I can't hear you. Yes, Neil. Yeah, yeah, can you place your cursor there, please? So that we can show the collaboration. Yeah. On the introduction section, and maybe delete something there. Yeah. And maybe delete a line which I might have written already. And while you do that, all what Shivan is doing, I could actually see here, uh, or even what I have done. So here you see that it gives me with the timestamp who has done what and when, right? So most of the actions were done by me. And when I click on it, it actually takes me to those places as well. What did I delete? Where did I delete? So all of that is tracked in detail. I can see all of that. And in cases where there are multiple collaborators, I can select that person and I can see what were the specific actions which was which was done by that particular person. So in this case, Shivain inserted this particular paragraph, he cited this figure, he deleted something, and you can see that this is now appearing in strike through because Shivain deleted that. So this way I can be completely on top of who has done what and when. Right. So there is absolutely no ambiguity. I have complete record of uh, actions done by different people. Right? Uh, I can again go, go get to a granular view of, view of paragraph level history as well, where it can give me more detailed actions. Right? I also see that there is a message here in chat for me. And uh, I think these people might have come online here and I can send them a message. I see Sarah has already left a message for me where she says, see this point. When I click on this blue dot, it takes me to this section. Let me show that again. If I was working here, my cursor was here and I see the chat window and I see Sarah saying, let's see this point. And when I click on it, it takes me to what she is indicating, right? And then all of us or two of us can look at the same thing and then we can keep chatting about it or keep having that conversation. And all of these, these kind of communication between two, in this case, three people is happening while looking at your content. So you do not have to move away from it. Your focus does not go away from it, whether it's about bringing your files, looking at your files, bringing your references, uh, looking at the history or even uh, when we are collaborating through chat. I see Shivan has added another section saying uh, in a chat message he sent that he has edited the introduction session section and I see that he has deleted it. And because it was my report, my, my line which he has deleted, I have control on it and I can I can choose to reject it. Okay, so that is my in my control. And when I click reject, you see this is gone. Okay, so this is how uh, I can, uh, as a collaborator, I have complete control on my content or the things which I have written. 
others can very effectively uh, collaborate with me. They can also see what all have I been doing. And Sarah sends another message. Please add your input and relevant information. So this is how we can interact. Chat helps much more when people are online at the same time, although you can still use that when they are not online. But in these scenarios, there's another way how you can collaborate where you can select a piece of text or image or whatever you want to give your comment against. And then you can comment against that, give your comment against that. Which may also happen in more formal ways uh, where between scholar and supervisor where they may look at your report and they may give you all of uh, these comments. You can also send that as an email. Uh, so this, oops, sorry. You can also respond if I choose to send it as an email, if a particular comment, I can select who should get that email. And I was able to mail this to Shivain alone. And I can also, or the other person can respond to my comments. And then as an owner of this thread, I can also resolve it, right? So I can initiate that conversation and I can also resolve it which will imply that, okay, this thread is closed, that necessary action on it was taken. So these are some of the ways how, how it helps you collaborate very, very effectively between two or multiple people. Now let's look at few other things uh, which we have seen that how it has helped people collaborate. For example, you have an image. I showed you how I, can, I could give a comment against a text, but let's say this was a very complex image and I want my colleague, Sarah, to make changes to a particular section. Then I will go into this edit mode and I'll place this blue dot here. What it would do is it would leave like a marker and whenever Sarah, my colleague or anyone else will look at it, when they click on it, they'll be able to see what I was trying to say at that particular point in the image. So this makes again collaboration very, very easy so that it takes away a bit of an ambiguity. And uh, interestingly, we also realized that people were using it to communicate with others even while publishing it. Uh, image, which is otherwise a very static mode, through these annotations, they were able to get their audience to engage with, a, with that image, which is a static form and then engage with it and deliver or derive more meaning out of it, right? Likewise, now let's look at video, how you can embed video and even how you can collaborate around a video. So for example, I want to insert another video here. So what I'll do is I will let's say this is one such YouTube video. I will just copy the code from there, which means if I want to use video, I can upload it uh, in my private profile of YouTube. And then I just need to carry that link, one line link and paste it here. And I can, the whole video gets embedded here, which means I don't have to upload, download those heavy files, which also means that uh, uh, whatever the views which I gather through that video, all of those analytics, all of those data, I can still see that in my private profile of YouTube, right? And even people have that uh, professional experience of watching that video in YouTube, right? So I could bring that video in here, right? So that's one that I could bring an interactive media here and I could use it in my report. But let's say that if I want to collaborate around that as well, or if, I am a supervisor and my scholar has uploaded this video. I want them to make certain changes. So again, just like a video, uh, just like uh, the image here, I can go to different points in time and I can add a video marker. And I say, I can say, please.
I'm just making up some comment. Likewise, I'll add And then when the when my collaborators or the other person comes to this, and when they look at it, they will click on it, and they will be taken to that particular point in time, rather than having to watch the whole video, and then they can go and address it, right? So this again is one way how you can two or more people can collaborate very effectively. And uh, similar to what I said about image, we have seen people using it, even though they use videos in their report they also go on to the extent of adding these markers so that their audience if they don't have time to watch or their readers if they don't have time to watch the whole video at least they can go to those specific points and then they can see what uh, they are trying to highlight there right so this is how you can bring audio this is how you can bring video uh, into your report you can also bring in simulations uh, so using all of those data points you can bring in final simulation you can keep that those data as a supplementary file here like i had showed one second like here we had all of these files you can select which files you want to become part of uh, as a supplementary information so you can have those detailed data as well but the final output of it in form of a simulation you can publish it as part of your report with which your audience or readers can interact okay and then they can derive meaning from it and it will come with all of the widgets which your simulation platform gives right so you can bring it as it is here into this report so these are some of the ways how you can write in author cafe you can collaborate and once you have done all of that and i'm skipping some of the basic parts here uh, in the interest of time but uh, before uh, we uh, before we uh, continue with the presentation there are two parts now i want to show you one something with which people struggle is the formatting you would have noticed that there is no way for me to change the font for me to change the font size and so on and so forth all of the things with which on which we spend time formatting our content the only thing which i have done here <clears throat> is uh, while writing i have let the platform uh, I have fed that information, whether it's a section heading, whether it's numbered, unnumbered, and what is the level, basically H1, H2, H3, what we do with other platform. And that is all what I have done here, nothing beyond that. And after having done that, and I might have also selected, for example, in figure, what is the kind of label which I want to use, what is the kind of numbering mechanism I want to use, and it will automatically auto number everything. So. Here you have figure two, you have figure three, and so on and so forth. You have video three, and so on and so forth. And even within, for example, in this figure, if I want to cite a source, at the bottom, it creates these sections automatically. And once all of that is done, then I will export this report. I can export this report as a word document but that's not what i'm going to show because that's very straightforward i'll show you how you can export it as a html first html is a web friendly format if you remember we spoke about pdf and some of the challenges associated with it uh, and it not being a very web friendly format so html is a web friendly format which has been primarily designed to uh, for the content to be consumed created and consumed for the internet devices or on the internet, right? So I am going to export it in that format. And you will notice that there are some templates. Templates are nothing but uh, they control how your final output would look like, right? From font, font style, and things like that. Let me pick one such and show it show to you. So you see on click of a button, now, the report which I had written looks very, very different. It has got same image, same section headings, but how the section heading is formatted, how it appears, the font, the videos, everything appears in a certain style and format. Just to show the highlight the contrast, this time I will select another template. And now you see it looks very, very different right and i did not do anything 
I just selected a different template. I did not have to do any manual effort. And this is just the HTML output of it, which also means that I can navigate through all of these sections. And this is where the beauty of HTML comes that as a reader, once it will get published, I will be able to navigate through all of these sections or I can go to all of these figures. It also tells me whether these figures are cited or not. For example, if I go to references, I can see that this reference is cited once in this article, I can get, it will take me to that point. This particular reference is cited twice in that article and it will take me to those respective sections. And if you remember, I did not do anything manually for all of these interlinking. I was only following my journey of just placing where I want to cite that reference, select the style and be done with it. With regards to section headings, I just selected it as a section heading style for figure. I did not do anything. We did not have a table or equations for references. I did not do anything special, right? Now the benefit it has is that one, it makes my final output look beautiful. It also enhances the reading experience by a lot. Right. Once it gets published, they can, my audience can interact with all of that without me having to put any manual effort. One more very important benefit is that the system understands this HTML format once it's put up on web, then the Google search engine or uh, different search engines, they understand that this is the whole report. They can read all of this report. They will know that these are the different section headings. In this particular report, these many references have been used. This is where these are the two places where references have been cited. And all of that adds to the context to the search engine. And that context, how does it help? It helps the same way when you search on Google and when you search for Apple, it understands based on your past searches or based on the context, whether you are talking about a fruit or you're talking about a device or a company, right? So it enhances the discoverability of your content. It enhances or improves the accessibility of your content. And these are all of the things which we talk about in open science, right? And without you having to put any additional effort for that. While it makes your life easy, it also improves reading experience. It also makes life easy for your search engines and in turn benefiting you and the community, right? Uh, <clears throat> very quickly, I'll show you, it can also export as a PDF in case where you have to take a printout of that and you don't want to go through the hassle of formatting everything. Although that's not the primary focus of today's discussion, but I just wanted to draw parallel between why HTML and why PDF and where both of them are relevant. So HTML is far more relevant when you have to put it up on web for its obvious benefit. PDF is primarily beneficial when you want to take a print out of something, right? And here you see that uh, it has been exported as a PDF. And like I said, PDF is a print ready or it's suited for print. And the moment we talk about print, the concept of pages come in picture and it automatically has broken down my content into pages with headers and page number and styling and so and so forth. I can take a quick preview of it. All of these videos become a thumbnails, which I can select. And these thumbnails come in here, the simulation come as a thumbnail here. And then I can, this is a preview of it and I can export it as a final PDF document, right? I can save it as a PDF now. And you see, it generates table of content if I want and then rest of the sections as a PDF document. I can go back to the editor. I can make any changes, whatever I want. Even if I imagine a thesis being 300 page long document. And if I make changes in the first paragraph, uh, how much of a cascading effect it will have if I have to do a manual formatting, but not with author cafe. I can do whatever I want here. I can delete this whole section. And then again, I can export. And it will do all of that formatting again and click off a button you see that that is, that is gone and the whole formatting is done again, right? So this is how it helps you make, uh, it helps you with knowledge creation part. Uh, it, going to, it helps you in 
when we talk about knowledge creation, not just from individual perspective, even from collaboration perspective, how it helps you, and then how it also makes your content ready for it to be published or put up on the web in a manner which is helpful for the uh, audience, for the search engines and all of it. So let's say if I have this report and now I will publish it, it generates this link for me. And now this has been put up on the web. Anyone with access to internet, they can go to this link. They can read this report, which I had here. I did not remove track changes. That's why I think this appearing. And as a reader, now there's the reader's view. I could go to all of these sections. I can go to these references. I can see and go to all of these information, right? So this is how my final output might look like. Right. Uh, Neil, I may interrupt yeah. a bit because yes, I please. think there is a question which might be yeah. relevant at this point. Right. So it's Garima Kushawa. She's asking that, uh, can you please demonstrate how to make our report private on orthography, even after it has been submitted and available online? Can we do oh. this? Yes, yes, we can do that. And uh, thanks for asking that question, Garima. Let me show that to you, how it has been done. So I'm going to show you not Author Cafe website right now. What I'm showing is Indian Academy of Science uh, website. They have they run summer research fellowship program where people come and they do research. They get paired up with a guide. They do uh, a research and at the end of it, they also produce a research output in form of a report. Right. I think uh, this is exactly the context where she's asking because I think right. she has submitted a report uh, as part of summer. Uh, Internships, of I course. See. So, okay, I think so. And then she she wants to do. I mean, if she wants, we can even enable her uh, uh, speaking permission, and she can ask it if that's makes sure. us more. Uh, uh, Janab, can you give that permission to? Um, okay, I have promoted her as a panelist, so she should be able to, to ask if she wants. Garima, would you want to ask or expand on your question? Okay, I don't see, then maybe we can move forward. Okay, sure, but I'll still uh, address her question. So this is Indian Academy of Science, their summer research fellowship website, and they have been using Author Cafe for quite some time now. And all of the reports which are finally approved are put up here. And as a, just with an access to internet, I can access it. All of the reports I can see, which are put up here. Now, to Garima's point, let's say if my report is very sensitive, I don't want everyone to see what can I do or can I control that. So here on right side, you can see that there are two kind of access filters available here. So let me click on private, which means it is going to show me all of the reports which have been defined as a private access. What it means is while this comes up, uh, you can see that there are some reports which have got a like lock sign before them, which means those are private reports, which means that those private for those private reports, it's only your primary metadata, which can be seen by others, which is your title, your author, and your guide details, your abstract and keyword, nothing else. And as a reader, if I want full access for it, either I should know the password, which means the owners of it will or people who have access to it, they may know the password, they can access it. Or I can click here to request access, in which case it will go to the people who hold that control, which could be an institution, which could be an author, depending on how your institution wants it, right? So all of this control can be defined using Author Cafe. There is also a third category of reports, which will not appear here, which are called protected report, where 
they were so sensitive that they did not even want to publish the metadata. So they are still put up, they are still available with Indian Academy of Science the, with the people who have authorized access to it, but not to the common public. So yes, you can define access control depending on how your institution has configured that control could be that could be your personal choice that could that permission could be with your guide or could be with some authority in your institution but author cafe as a technology platform enables that to happen i hope that addressed the question if you have a follow-up question uh, feel free to ask now since we have already moved from uh, author cafe uh, how the knowledge creation could happen, how the dissemination could happen. I published it as an HTML, right? And I showed you. Let me show that a little more in detail, taking example of the same portal, which we have already started talking about. So here you can see all of the reports are available, which means that the community can benefit from it. And anyone who searches on Google with some of the related parameters, they will be taken to this particular report or some of these reports here. Right. So a four month long research report, which otherwise used to be in hard copy and no one used to have access to it. Now it's available for the whole world to see the whole community to see. And that's one uh, great example of open science or what we are talking about. Right. And let's look at one such report. So this is one report where as a reader, I can also share it with my network using all of these handles. It has got all of those usual elements of a report. Again, you see a very small thing. In this case, the table was not too big, but imagine if it was a PDF, I could not have brought in a big table. But with a HTML format, which is web-friendly format again, I can bring a big table as well. Even if there were 20 columns to it, there is no problem I could have uh, seen. Uh, I, I, I would have accessed it very well. Right. Uh, you see there are videos which have been embedded here, like I showed you while creating a new report. You see in this case, the author has included few reports in there, a few videos in their report, right? Which makes their report very, very engaging. I think there's no simulation here. The references automatically appear here, sources appear here. Even as a audience or as a reader, I have a very rich experience of going through this report. I can navigate through different images and so on and so forth. All of these things, which are limitation of PDF because it's a, a print oriented medium. Plus how I showed you that we can navigate through different sections. So this is something which I'm doing as a reader. I'm able to navigate from one image to the other. I can read their description. And for all of this, while creating the author did not have to spend any extra time or effort, right? All of these numbering of equations, numbering of figure table, everything happens automatically. And you can see at the bottom, it says written, reviewed, revised, proofed and published with Author Cafe. So the whole revision and proofing, which is basically going through some sequence of steps, that also has been done through Author Cafe, which is more of a research administration part, which I'm going to skip it today for obvious reasons. But <clears throat> this is how Author Cafe helps right from knowledge creation to its administration, going through a necessary revision and review and approval cycle, and then finally disseminating it on web. So just imagine this is how we are working with some of the universities in India, where their thesis, they will have a portal where they, their thesis will be put up here. The ETD will be put up here and not just in a digital format, which is PDF, but in a manner which the readers can read it uh, in meaningful way and also search engines can understand and make it far more discoverable and accessible. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show in the demo. I will take a small pause to see if there are any questions. Uh, if someone has question, they can raise the hand as well, because I think uh, maybe uh, asking it directly would help. So uh, yeah. among the participants, if anyone wants to ask a question, uh, okay, uh, someone ask. Uh, okay, can we enable uh, the permission, Janab? 
Oh, okay, talking yes, is permitted. Hello, good morning, all. I'm Dr. Raimi Moro Falalikon from Nigeria. I want to say this is a very insightful uh, uh, information. I have actually learned a lot uh, for the past three days now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but my question regarding this uh, auto cafe, is there a way we can uh, 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 merge this auto cafe with our other profile like Goku Scholar, uh, meddling um, uh, lens, you know, another social media to to internalize everything to be in one platform. Is there a way? Um, probably we can now say, okay, this 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 part of uh, the re research or what we are still working on uh, is locked. It cannot be accessible except based on authorization. And why this one can be made uh, public? Is there a way it can be done, or is it just streamlined to individual uh, uh, profile and uh, uh, sites that each individual can just? But you cannot that uh, flexibility of merging your proof other profile with that of Auto Cafe. Is there is there a linkage? Is there a way we can get it done? That's my question. Thank you. Over. Okay. Uh, thanks for thanks for your question. Uh, I'll just reiterate to, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, to confirm whether I understood it right. Uh, you meant to ask that, is there a way that you can bring your profile from Google Scholar or different places like ID or other platforms so that all of your work can be brought into one place? Was that your question? Yes, that's my question. Okay, all right. Uh, so right now, Author Cafe is integrated with Orc ID. So yes, if you have uh, whatever information you want to share through your Orc ID profile or you want to bring that into Author Cafe, you can do that. But uh, it's only confined to at this moment about your personal information, your affiliations, not your publications. It will not fetch your publication from Google Scholar on uh, and Orc ID. But that's definitely something which is on our roadmap, which is something which we want to add, but not available right at this moment. Uh, anyone else <clears throat> would have some question that they want to ask? Uh, they can raise their hand. Uh, I don't see any uh, hand raise, uh, though there was a question actually Mm, on the, the because uh, there was a comment that it's very similar to Google Doc. Uh, however, I guess after the presentation is done, we could see the difference, but still, if you want to say one or two words about it, it would be nice. Sure. Uh, so, yes, uh, I think initially when I started showing it, it must have looked like Google Doc, but uh, it's not just that, right? Uh, it definitely is a browser-based writing platform where you can do collaboration. But as we went through the demo further, you might have seen how it helps you manage your reference, how it helps you collaborate around references, how it helps you to collaborate around your files. So this has been designed unlike Google Scholar, which is a generic writing platform where you can write uh, from a corporate document to a leave application. Author Cafe has been designed to cater to the specific needs of research writing, right? So you'll not find anything which is not useful and you might find a lot of things which are specifically useful for researchers. And the reference manager, asset manager, formatting, those are some of the things which uh, we have built as part of that. There are a few more parts, but in interest of time, I've skipped those. And that's only one side of it around knowledge creation. Then administration, I could not show, but uh, also how you could publish your report which we uh, showed you using example of in Indian Academy of Science portal, that also I hope that would have given you the contrast from Google Docs. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Neil. The, there is one more question. Maybe we can just uh, see that. Like, can we trail access? So that's the question. Okay. Uh, 
I assume just to understand it better, I assume that once my report has been published, I want to see who has accessed it. Is that what uh, is implied with this question? Uh, Dr. Prakash, if you want to uh, ask this question, uh, do you want us to enable your... Will you please raise your hand if you want? Okay. Uh, I don't see the interaction, so so uh, I'm not very really sure. Okay, but there but is um, one. Uh, yeah, yeah, please, sir. Yeah, just from that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> if if the question was that, can I see who exactly has viewed my published report? That you can't see because. For that you need people need to create their account and log in and then only see which would again become a deterrent to open science once your report has been put up on web then anyone can read it but you can definitely gather the metrics and you can see how many people have read it how many people have downloaded it if people commented that of course you can see so those are the things which you can definitely uh, get a view of uh, okay so i think he has raised his hand so i will request Shana to um, uh, yeah, talking now is public. Yeah. Good morning. My question is, uh, can we have trial access for evaluating the product? Uh, okay. Yes, you can have a trial access for it. So, in fact, uh, just the writing platform, not the other parts, the administration part and publishing part, not that, but just the writing platform with its basic features are available for anyone to try it. So you can go to authorcafe.com. In fact, I would request and encourage all of you to go and visit uh, www.authorcafe.com, create your account, explore it, and please share your feedback with us. So yes, Dr. Prakash, we would love for you to try it out and let us know what you think about it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks, Neil, because this is one of the things that we also wanted to make sure that uh, there is a free version because that is one that not everybody probably would be able to pay for everything. Right. So at least the basic version that is free, that's definitely wonderful. Uh, yeah, I would then go to the next uh, uh, next person, Subha Darshini. Can you please ask your question? Hello? Yeah, yes. am I audible? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hello, sir. sir. Actually, it was very nice. Uh, will I, I mean, personally, I like that uh, Authors Cafe. It is for particularly the uh, arrangement or the management of the reference with which actually we face a lot of problem arranging and all. And also the collaboration like editing, it is wonderful. Just a personal like question, what my doubt is, ki, because it is like connected through internet, like many people will be editing and all. So is there any like, fear or chance of like getting the data somewhere else it's trapped or something. Uh, you mean that uh, other collaborators can delete your data? Is that what you mean? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so when you invite a collaborator and if they make changes to it, they make edits to it, of course, we don't have a control on it, but you can always track it down like we showed it in using the history feature. You can always get to that, that who had done what changes, what did they delete? So you can definitely access all of that information. Okay, okay. And but we can have a collaborative control. that if somebody has deleted something, so can I have an earlier version to go back because- uh, yeah. That's probably the right. Uh, so you we do not have the concept of versioning, and that's a bit of deliberate because with versioning, then you end up creating multiple versions of it. Yeah. That is where there's a workaround. The different way is that you go to the history and you can see which part was deleted, and then maybe you can copy it from there and put it back. Right. Okay. So, so not through version, but through history log, you can manually do that. Right. Okay. okay, sir. One more thing, just yes. like uh, because it's a very new platform, and uh, I I will I just registered in that website just now. I opened the account. Thank you. Just, Thank you very much. <laughs> just like uh, because if there are any doubts or any problem I'm facing, can I contact yeah. anyone? Like whom I can contact? Yes. So uh, towards the end of this presentation, we will leave that email ID. Uh, okay. Uh, it it is contact at authorcafe.com. You can write to us on contact at authorcafe.com, 
and we will anyway share that information uh, and some of us will get back to you. Okay, thank you. That's okay. Uh, thank so you. now, uh, Morufu, uh, uh, please ask your question. Yes, thank you for the opportunity once again. I, uh, at the moment, I'm on the Auto Cafe platform. I have uh, registered my profile. Uh, I, however, from here, I don't know how to navigate. Probably there is a little video I can watch to guide me through and to, to know what and what is expected of, of me to do. Because during the registration, there is a place called uh, Biodata. And I saw some little, little icon. I thought it's something I would just copy some of my pro little profile information and paste, but they said I should upload. And when I try uploading, uh, it's also very challenging. I also skip to the LinkedIn profile. I try uh, entering my details, but it's not coming up. So uh, I don't know if there are any contact information so that we can send a message across of some of the little challenges we are likely uh, facing while uh, registering our profile on the Auto Cafe site. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Morufu, uh, and thanks for signing up so quickly. Uh, first, if you get stuck anywhere, if you can see my screen on the main dashboard after you have created your account, there's a question mark here, which will take you to a user manual. You can try going to the user manual and see whether your questions are answered there or not. If not, please feel free to write us on contact at authorcafe.com and one of us will respond to you and will address this query. Okay, so this is the help manual. Again, I'll repeat, you can go to this question mark on your dashboard, which will take you to the user manual. And here you can search for the question which you have, or you can navigate through this and see if this your question is not answered here and you're still struggling with it, please feel free to write to us and we'll be happy to assist you. Uh, thank you, Neil. Uh, actually, we have one more question where I'm not very sure about the question. What does it that mean? Uh, so VS Jayakumar is asking, can we create a virtual portal of researchers? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it means. So if he wants to ask uh, this, so please uh, raise your hand. Yes, so Chana, can you please uh, enable the access? Yeah, Mamita, while the access is being enabled, I wanted to know how much time do we have? Because we also, if time permits, we wanted to do a hands-on session for five volunteers so oh, that they could okay. actually access Author Cafe. Uh, we at least have another half an hour. So okay. after this question, we can uh, sure. go back there. Uh, okay, sure. so um, please, Jayakuma. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was a very interesting presentation for researchers. Uh, what I wanted to ask was, can we think of uh, creating a virtual group of like-minded researchers who are interested in a particular uh, new innovative topic or something like that to bring others together with their publications uh, grouped together and made available? Uh, thanks, thanks for that idea. I can't commit to that right away, but uh, what we are trying to do right now is when we work with institutions like we are working with Ashoka, Manipal, Geetam, and a few other institutions, we are thinking of creating a network within that institution first of all of the scholars and all of the researchers inside that network, because all of them would be on Author Cafe already. And then we might want to connect to those institutions based on their own consent, whoever wants to become part of that network to begin with, so that we start at a smaller scale. But uh, thanks for your question. Maybe th this would encourage us to think of uh, outside of that network as well. But uh, we would love to hear more of your thoughts on this. How do you think it would be helpful? What, what would be your expectations from such network? So if you could provide your email ID in the chat window, I'll make a note of it and we would love to have more uh, further conversation with you in this regard. Yeah, thank you so much for the information. Uh, you know that already pure.elsevier is providing a uh, type of network of collaborators yeah. and all that. So if there yeah. are uh, maybe from unorganized sectors, say uh, as a uh, consequence of the open science discussions, uh, many people with novel ideas, 
may be brought together with that sort of thing. Uh, I will surely give you my email ID and we'll uh, discuss those things later. Uh, sure, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Ajay Kumar, if you don't have the access to the chat, please in the question answer, put your email ID. Uh, the last uh, one is Ranjini. Let us take this and then we can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, her yeah. talking is permitted. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this um, uh, enlightening session. Uh, this has been very useful. Uh, I have two questions, one um, regarding Auto Cafe, the other is on Osan itself, the whole network. Uh, uh, the first question uh, uh, for uh, Auto Cafe is that, um, uh, is it um, uh, also available for social sciences and auth authors and uh, scholars in public policy as well? Um, uh, or is it uh, uh, the uptake is more from sciences? Uh, uh, so I just wanted to get a sense of uh, whether um, uh, you have disseminated within the social sciences, humanities and public policy circles. Um, uh, uh, that is one question. The other is uh, for Osan. Uh, uh, how do you want to take this um, uh, group forward? Um, because this is so important and um, uh, the network that we have formed through this uh, through the last three days what 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 is the roadmap and what are the activities that you uh, envision in the future thank you okay. very much okay let me yeah. quickly uh, yeah. go and finish from, from my part and then nil can elaborate and take it so uh, ranjini uh, we definitely have a certain roadmap ahead to take uh, the whole concept of open science forward, not just in India, but in South Asia. And um, we definitely are going to have a, a closed door meeting as a part of OCEAN with the science leader, uh, not just the science leader, but like representative of academies of all the South Asian and also collaborator like International Science Council, UNESCO might also be part and we will discuss how this can be taken forward. We have certain idea, we wanted also to collect the idea and definitely we will reach out to everyone for more idea because the next immediate after this, we will launch another event, which is Ideathon. So in that Ideathon event would another be option for everyone to connect. So more details we will definitely share with everyone in, in, in some time. Thank you. Over to you, Neil. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks Dr. Ranjini for your question. So yes, Author Cafe is for humanities as well, social sciences as well. In fact, Ashoka University, which is uh, predominantly operating in field of liberal science, at least to begin with, they have using they are using Author Cafe. And even besides that, we have had researchers or academicians from non-science stream using and deriving value from Author Cafe. So because we are a technology-led platform, although we are building it for researchers, but uh, it's not subject specific, I would say it's subject to stream agnostic. Hope that answered your question. But if you if you think that there are specific nuances of non-science streams with regards to all what we spoke about today, and you think that is an unmet need, I would be very happy to learn from you and uh, see if we can address that through other cafe. Okay, uh, she says thank you. I think it answers, and obviously, uh, she can anyway write to us or write directly to you for more. Uh, so, please uh, carry on. Okay, sure. Let me share my screen again. Okay, now just to wrap things up before we get into the hands-on session and I'll invite uh, five of the volunteers, but just before that, what do we think is the way forward? We spoke about, we have been talking in context of open science, we spoke about the role of ETDs, uh, where we are, what are some of the challenges, what Shodh Ganga is doing, what we are trying to do, but what is our hope, what is the vision? So we hope that in the days to come, thesis become more mainstream, they also become uh, rich source of information 
it gets accepted as a proof of work. So far, we have we know that it's predominantly journal publications only. It gets start being used in academic for academic purposes as well. And like we spoke earlier, by giving more focus and thrust on thesis, it will have its far reaching effect through the journey of research, through the journey of doing PhD as well. And it will naturally inculcate some of the best practices right from transparency to ethics and some of the issues and challenges which we often encounter in this context. Gathering metrics, so once ETDs become more mainstream, it would help us understand that much better how it's being consumed through some of these matrices, the same way publishers collect data for the publications or the authors get to know through their H index or citations, right? But for thesis, we do not have such measure. So we hope that in days to come, there will be some mechanism through which a researcher would get to know or institutions would get to know how their output is being consumed and by how many people. This was by Momita only uh, when we had done a workshop some time back focused on ETD and uh, something which we found very, very profound and very inspiring uh, when she said that uh, in Indian context, there's a great thrust of, on open science, but there are some practical challenges to implement that. And ETD could be one such way uh, in that direction. And that encouraged us a lot more to be on this path and explore ways, think of ways, what else we can do. And that is what we hope that when we think of open science in India, ETD would act as one of the pioneer and hopefully Author Cafe would have a small role to play there. With that said, time for one poll. And right after that, we will get to the hands-on session. Or I think there are a couple of questions which uh, Shivan has for all of you. So Shivan, over to you. Uh, I have uh, posted the poll uh, for uh, link Share in the it. chat. Thanks for the call. So I would request that in this to please take part in the poll. I hope the uh, attendees have the poll link. We got one response. So. We request everyone to participate and share their responses, please. Thank uh you. -huh. 
Shivan, can you scroll down a little bit? Oh, it's not enough. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's an interesting comment here. Seems unfavorable if the research has not reached ultimate conclusion, but it is data while doing experiment and has been published. Yeah, that's a fair point. And these are some of the practical challenges what we are trying to address or trying to find a middle ground for it. Copyright compliance is an issue, yes. Okay. So uh, we'll move to next poll question. Will you have, I'll stop sharing if you have any other slide to share. Uh, no, you can move to the next poll, Chivan. Uh, okay. We had a QA slot in between, but I think we have taken some of the questions. So after this poll, we can get to hands on session. And then if time permits, we can take a few more questions. Okay, so I will put the poll five in the chat box now then. Is it? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, I have posted it. Should we visit it? Thanks, Mom. I'll share my screen. Much of the following is can you use the word? Someone has already used ETD. Nice. Okay, I think a uh, very expected pattern here with most of the responses coming for open access journal then for preprint. I'd be very curious to know from the people who have used DTD and how their experience has been. Uh, would you please want to share to people who have selected DTD as the option? 
how was your experience actually i don't know who are this they can raise their hand so that we can identify and uh, make the permission to to, to talk even if you face some challenges it would be good for all of us to learn from it so please uh, come forward and share your experience with us uh if so uh, pragya has a hand raised pragya yeah i mean i used etd during my phd thesis submission and it was a very smooth process so yeah. this etd platform was basically provided by the white rose uh, university collaboration within the uk and uh, it was a very streamlined process and yeah i mean i did not face any difficulties and it was uh, quite easy and we had embargo situation and everything like whatever we needed to do was actually provided to us so it was quite seamless okay. so which means you used etd to submit or deposit your own thesis yes yes i see okay so your thesis is available for the community then yes if you use right. my name it will be one of the first top results <laughs> oh very nice okay so see i think it's for others uh, uh, this speaks for itself that uh, uh, how it helps and uh, did you also use uh, other did you also go through other etds or other thesis while you were doing your research uh no for us it was actually quite uh, like the university was part of this white rose coalition and uh, they like about three or four universities and that is the platform they use so i did not really need to do any other research for etd or something it was a very clear path for me i see okay okay thank you thanks for sharing your experience and now we are going to reach out to you to learn more about it sure sure yeah okay thank you uh yes shivan i think uh, let's stop it here and move on so now the last bit of today's discussion where uh, we wanted some of you to experience the platform first we had actually thought of uh, that we could do uh, we could actually write in some of you in the groups but that becomes a little difficult and virtual environment so i would uh, request if five volunteers can nominate themselves and they can share their email id and then i'll invite you to author cafe as a collaborator in a report and then we will do an exercise a very short exercise of 10 15 minutes uh i will request the participants to raise their hands because i think this is this would be a very uh, good exercise okay uh moreful has raised so can you please in that um, question answer uh, panel please put your email id and who else uh please come forward so that other can learn as well you would also be get the access to use it i think everyone is a bit shy okay i don't see anyone else raising the hand so what to do so can we get at least one more person if possible uh, you can now. also maybe uh, randomly ask someone for example uh, ranjini was asking if there are challenges for right. uh, so yeah ranjini if you could share if your you email share id because that would be good because there was the question on how useful it would be for social sciences and policy yeah it would be nice if you can come forward please i am garima to your question i think this is very srf specific question it would be great if you could actually email it to us and we will uh, help you out there but garima might already have an access to it or i don't know but she can also be in one volunteer if yeah. that's uh because i think this exercise won't work if uh yeah. if one more volunteer doesn't come in 
uh, and yeah, okay. Uh, I don't see any more email ID, unfortunately. Mm, okay, okay, that's fine. So I, I'm not sure if you'll be able to do that with one person. Uh, it would work out really well with just two of us there. But maybe I can reach out to Marufu since he has already volunteered uh, uh, himself. So Marufu, I'll reach out to you. I'll give you a personalized demo of Father Cafe in detail, right? So thanks for volunteering, but sorry, because we do not have enough people, we may not be able to do this, uh, uh, this small exercise effectively. But uh, in return, since you volunteered, I will reach out to you very, very soon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so with that, uh, I think, uh, Mamita, we can move to questions if there are any, and then yeah, we can- I would, I would say that the questions are something that I think they, everyone can ask. If this platform is useful for them, then uh, more questions should, could be something that we can ask better. So any more questions? Any questions, any feedback, any ideas which you think we can do in Author Cafe? Uh, there is uh, something I don't understand. What is there is no a AI of the or what does that mean? Uh, Udit, if you want to come online, then you can raise your hand. If you want oh, to I ask think, the question, I think mm -hmm. he might have meant uh, in the poll there is no all of the above option. I'm guessing oh, okay, okay. that might okay. have been his question. Oh, okay, okay, that that might be the case. So uh, it looks like that. Everyone is quite satisfied with the demo because we don't have any more questions. So, because all the questions are answered and we're almost all okay. And uh, I think that uh, in the chat box, uh, Shivan has put the author cafe's uh, team's contact address. So everyone, can, anyone who has some questions can I think reach directly to all of you. And as I would like to uh, put this uh, or enhance, uh, like put it again, that since the basic uh, platform is free, so anyone can use it. And that is one of the fundamental principles that we will, I think that makes all the things more exciting is that at least you can try it out, see how, how it goes. And then the option is to on you that if that the basic person is enough for you, then you can continue. But if you think, no, it is something that you want or your university can, definitely that's up to the people or the researchers. And that's what we want to stress on, that we don't want to impose or we don't want any, to tell anyone what to do. Our job as a researcher or Anyways, that to show people what is available or, or exactly what's happening in the current situation globally so that we are prepared to tackle the challenges. For example, open science is becoming a norm. Many of the uh, journals are asking that you have to deposit your data, you have to deposit your raw or videos and everything. So we should be prepared for it. And that's why one of the reasons that we invited Author Cafe to give this demonstration that how they can utilize the tool and some portion of it free as well for anyone to use to comply with the norm with the global community, even with the journals. Or even for them also, it is very useful that they can collaborate. And that would going to be norm. So uh, it's very, it would be very good for our researchers also already should be on the path. Do more collaboration, do more collaborative project and be a bit open because that's going to be the new normal very soon. If there is some um, commercial aspect as, uh, associated with your research then obviously there is this embargo. There are a lot of options available. So. That, with that, I would really like to thank Author Cafe to come forward and voluntarily do this session for us, which which is which we are really thankful about that you came forward to show this. Thank you, thank you, Neil, Shivendra, Savita, and Tara. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, thank you, Momita, Ragya, and all of the organizers and the audience. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, so we would request the participants that uh, we would come back 
again at two o'clock with the next session. Now we have quite a long break now because after three days we thought that uh, everybody would be a little tired. So we didn't want it to overburden you because the afternoon session is very engaging. There are two panel discussions um, and a lot of international part, uh, participation as well. We would learn about uh, International Science Council is going to organize a panel to talk about preprints. And then we would know about research assessment practices in Global South, India, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka, how the research assessment happens. Because as we already understood that research assessment is something very important because where do we publish is something is tied to our assessment process. So what are the advancement or what are the new ch challenges coming in the assessment process is something that we're going to discuss and not just in South Asia, but we will also get a perspective of Latin America as well. 